the trees have gone the soil is going away the water doesn't stay back and now even the men are going away the anil agarwal environment training institute is csc's new campus it is based in tijara and it is named after csc's founder director anil agarwal a man ahead of his times an environmentalist uh, a humanist somebody who taught us all there is to know about the environment of today but because we were naming this institute after anil we knew that we had to go we had to walk the talk in fact we had to go an extra mile so that we could actually make sure that we were doing a campus that was green and that was sustainable and i want to share with you and part of our effort today is to explain the journey that we have gone through to try and make this a green campus before we undertook the exercise of imparting knowledge on environment and sustainable development we had to design a campus that would reflect our agenda which is a campus that is sustainable and resource efficient yet practical and comfortable so we decided to put our ideas and concept into practice gaining knowledge as we went along about what works and what does not let me break down the green features of ati under three categories energy water and solid waste uh the question is what temperature are you most comfortable with and a lot of people will say that they require the room very cold some people say they require they are happy to live with the temperature of say 26 to 28 degrees but a lot of it is also got to do with the clothes you wear so the the relationship with temperature your comfort and then of course your attire your mindset so that you're prepared to live with that uh, temperature has all been part of the discussions that we've had and what we will explain to you how we have put this into practice at ATI we wanted to know what is comfortable when you enter a mall or a five star hotel you are greeted with a blast of near frigid air but sometime after you begin to feel cold the ambient temperature in most of these places are kept at low 20s say 21 or 22 the national building code says that the comfortable temperature is between 25 to 30 degrees during the summers so we set our temperature range between 24 and 28 degrees celsius the range of temperature gave us the opportunity to take advantage of passive design elements into our buildings passive design elements have been incorporated into all the buildings of ATI so that the use of auxiliary cooling and heating can be minimized part of this design involves curating the heat from the sun in a way that it does not become a nuisance during the summer and at the same time provides warmth and light during the winters this has been done by orienting our buildings north south thereby eliminating the harsh east west summer sun while allowing the light from the southern sun to penetrate into our buildings we know therefore and that's the principle that's the building blocks of sustainability you first build compact you build so that you build with passive architecture which reduces your requirement you then make sure that you use the best insulation so that you can uh, you also further require reduce your requirement for heating and cooling then you choose a heating and cooling system which is far more efficient then you use appliances which require less energy and then at the end of it you source your energy using renewable and that's been the principle the building blocks that we have used at ATI What you see here are chhajjas or sun shades that block the hot summer sun but allow the warm winter sun rays into the building. We know that during the summers the sun is higher in the sky and the sun rays fall at an angle of 50 degrees but during the winter the sun is much lower in the sky and the sun rays slant at an angle of 30 degrees thereby allowing the winter sun 
to provide light and heat into the interiors. All the buildings in ATI have less than 30% wall to window ratio which allows right amount of light to enter the building. Another important aspect of passive architecture design is building material and insulation. For the buildings in AATI, autoclave aerated concrete or AAC blocks were used along with extruded polyesterine foam insulation. The type of wall assembly used in AATI can cut the ingress of heat by over 50%. For this same reason, the roof too has been insulated while the surface of the roof has been layered with white ceramic tiles to reflect heat from the sun. Let me talk about the heating and ventilation and air conditioning or HVAC systems at AAETI. We have a three-stage evaporative cooling system. It is a system based on the old-fashioned desert cooler but made more efficient through its direct and indirect technology of cooling air. In the first stage, the air is cooled indirectly by pipes carrying water which is humidified in the second stage through direct evaporation. The third stage, which uses the refrigerant for cooling instead of water, kicks in only when the ambient air has too much humidity, rendering the evaporative cooling redundant. This system restricts the use of energy-intensive, refrigerant-based cooling to two to three months of monsoon. We have two variations for this third stage cooling. In the hostels, a heat pump is installed which enables us to recycle the heat reject from the system to meet the hot water requirements of the building. Additionally, it doubles up as a space heating in winters. In the academic block behind me, the third stage is catered via water-cooled chiller since there was no need for hot water in the block, nor heating in winter as the block is used only during the daytime and the passive design of the building helps keep the interiors comfortable, supported by seasonal appropriate clothing. Our laboratory requires a high degree of weather control to adhere to the scientific protocols, which are driven by variables other than the human comfort. Therefore, our experimental systems could not be extended here. We want to share this with you because these are the principles that need to be used in architecture. The most important is rainwater harvesting. We know that we are based in a region which is water scarce, but yet we have an amazing watershed, a catchment area behind us. So how do you optimize on that? How do you make sure every drop of water that falls in ATI is used to recharge our groundwater? The AATI campus has been designed to be water neutral. It is surrounded by the Aravalis, which means the catchment area of water is huge. We preserved natural drainage at the site, and to do this, we had to scatter the buildings across the plot. Even then, only 9% of the area is under construction. The rooftops of two of the buildings have been designed to collect rainwater. We have nearly 40,000 square meters of land within the campus which can be used for groundwater recharging. Rooftop rainwater harvesting can be done on another 1,458 square meters. A total of 12,000 kiloliters of rainwater can percolate into the ground, while an additional 912 kiloliters can be collected in the underground tanks that fall on the rooftops. The remaining water requirement, which is for flushing and horticulture, is met through recycling of wastewater. Then of course there's a question of wastewater and you will see on our campus how every drop of uh, sewage is recycled, reused. How do you make ATI a water neutral campus so that we do not waste, in fact we value the raindrop but together with that we also reuse and recycle every drop of wastewater that we have. It's not waste, it is water to water. Connecting the academic building and the faculty housing is an 8 kiloliter decentralized wastewater treatment system or DWATS. This is a three-stage treatment system where the sewage passes through a settler, a baffle reactor and then treated in an aerobic polishing pond. The quality of water from this system is being used for gardening and horticultural purposes here. 
Our next system is a soil biotechnology based wastewater treatment system which has been designed and patented by IIT Mumbai. This system takes in 20 kiloliters a day of wastewater from the student housing complex and the cafeteria. This system uses two bioreactors that has layers of crushed stones, jute bags, crushed bricks along with media for microbial growth. The water from this system is pumped to an overhead tank and is used for flushing. The campus also has two septic systems. One is what we know as improved septic tank. The idea here is to see how we can improve a conventional septic tank system which is widely used across India and other parts of the developing world. In this case, the septic tank is three-chambered as against the widely used two-chambered system. The first and the second chamber is for the settling and the third chamber improves the quality of sewage through biodegradation. Then there is solid waste and we have tried our best to make sure that we segregate, we reuse, we compost and of course we have authorized recyclers where the rest of the waste is going. But we are finding massive challenges here. We are finding huge amount of food waste and you will notice at ATI that we are beginning, we want to measure how much waste is wasted every day, food waste is wasted every day because we have to minimize this. CAC has been actively promoting segregation of waste at source, composting of organic wet waste and recycling and scientific disposal of all other wastes. Keeping this spirit in mind, our aim is to become a zero waste campus in the near future. So our work at ATI to make it a green campus is still an unfinished business. There are two major areas that we still have to work on. One, we have to monitor the performance of what we are doing. Because you can build as green a building as you want. If the actual performance of the building is not good, we do not end up saving energy, we do not end up saving water, we do not end up recycling our waste, we've virtually wasted our money. So monitoring performance is going to be our most important thing and sharing that monitoring is going to be part of it. But then we have one big unfinished business which is renewable energy. We've done everything, our energy need is down, now we want to go off the grid. We want to make sure that we have enough renewable energy so that we can make the complex self-reliant. That will be amazing and I hope we will have that story to share with you also very soon.